stay in the siding for the rest of the day. The spirals out and grew colder and colder. The rain fell more heavily, and what had begun as a splendid day began to turn into a disaster. I wish I was in my nice warm shed, he said to himself miserably. At last the inspector returned. Cheer up, Thomas, he said. We'll be at the museum tomorrow, and they have promised to mend your front end in their workshop. Thank you, sir, said Thomas. But if I can't run on rails, how can I get there? It's all fixed, replied the inspector cheerfully. A lorry is coming for you in the morning. Thomas was horrified. A lorry, he stammered. That's right, said the inspector. It'll be here at eight o'clock sharp. Thomas slept badly that night. He kept wondering what Gordon, Henry and James would say if they knew he had finished his journey on a lorry. He almost thought he could hear them laughing. Next morning, the driver and fireman came early. A diesel shunter came to push Thomas out of his siding and along towards the road, where they found the lorry waiting. A steel cable was fastened to his coupling. The lorry driver started a winch, and in no time at all, it seemed, Thomas was perched on the road. How undignified, he thought. went round to the front of the lorry. When the lorry driver came back, Thomas heard him say something, then slammed the cab door crossly. Soon they reached a large building with rails running into it. Thomas was unloaded and the lorry drove away. Thomas looked about him. He had arrived. When his driver and fireman came, Thomas told them about the man with the flat cap. They laughed loudly. How do you do it, Thomas? spluttered the driver when he could speak. That will make the fat controller's day. Thomas booked for parking. <laughs> 